Mina, konnichiwa. Jesus freaking gamer here with my friend Robbie. That was a point he really wants to make. Okay, so piggybacking off of the last one. End of last video, you said that this was uh, very lenient for any of all of its time. Not just lenient, way way ahead of its time. Now, leaps and bounds. I assume what you are referring to is laws of other nations, things like that that exist today. At that time, correct. Back then. Right. Correct. Every, I was saying everything in that time. All right. So, not necessarily other religions. Because you realize Christianity is not the first religion ever. No, it is not. Um, well, that was one thing I always thought in elementary school. I always thought it was. Until I got into eighth grade. And I was like, huh, well, you know, it makes sense that, you know, the, the first ever religion would be the one that's right. That makes sense. And then I got into eighth grade, I was like, I was in the first religion. Kind of shot myself in the foot with that one, didn't I? <laughs> I'll say at the very mu the the earliest trace of worship can only go back to uh, historically Abraham, who started Judaism. Uh, I can't go any further back than that. Of course, I'm pretty sure the like if, if we were to carbon date things that we have now, I'm pretty sure the most ancient religious text we can find. I'm pretty sure it had. I, I believe it was Nordic mythology. Um, or paganism. That the Bible, has been theorized to the be Bible has older than Judaism. The Bible has referred to paganism a lot. I never knew what I meant by paganism. Um, from the certain things I've read, it would lead to the inference that by paganism it meant, like, Nordic mythology. Um, which I believe, yeah, that is the oldest text or... No, or whatever we have as old as shit that we can find. You know, historically, I think you're absolutely right because um, it mentioned when Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees to go to the Promised Land that Abraham had to put his... I'm almost sure. I can't completely quote it because I don't know the verse off the top of my head. But I'm almost positive that God told him, leave the gods of that land behind. So there would... Zeus! All right. So while God himself is the only I true God... Zeus. Odin! All right. Oh, I got, God. I got, I, got, I got Roman and Nordic mythology confused. Uh, that is so shameful. It is. Uh, especially because I'm huge fans of both. Jeez, dude. But, um... And it's odd because if you look at Nordic mythology, I actually have a... It, it's not... It, it's funny because we call it Nordic mythology. Called mythology. That used to be a religion that people believed in. Back when I was in school, I thought all the Greek stuff was fairy tales, like Same. Zeus and shit. Same. It took me reading in the book of Acts, where Paul and Barnabas went to a temple of Diane, and I was like, wait. It was actually the Bible that showed me that this religion wasn't mythology. It was a religion. Yeah. It was for real. I was and like, wait, it's... holy shit, this stuff's for real? I find it kind of what? I find it kind of funny because. We refer to it as mythology. That can be kind of offensive. Because I actually know someone that believes in Nordic mythology. Um, they, their paganism itself is seeing a bit of a resurgence religiously in the United States. Yeah, I know someone that believes in it. And it was interesting because he uh, gave me a lot of citations. And uh, he read me a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's odd that some of the stories from paganism appear in the Bible. The first one that comes to mind is the Flood. Uh, the first one that comes to mind for me is the Garden of Eden. Okay. Um, well, that's the very beginning. It's the very start. Uh, he read me something, obviously it's the exact same, but he read me something about how one of the gods, I believe it was Thor, I don't know, one of the gods, mm -hmm. made a plot on the earth that was meant to be worshipped him. And he was like, hey, there is this fucking tree that only gods can eat. Don't fuck with that shit. And the people there were like, alright, we won't fuck with it. And then Loki disguised himself as a snake and was like, hey, eat this god tree. And they were like, alright, I'll do it. And they ate the god tree and they were thrown out of the plot. My first thought is, is this legit? This, uh, from what he read and what he showed me, it is legit. Which, if that came first, I'd be like... Take us some royalties there, aren't you, God? That's... <laughs> I, to my knowledge, actually, 
when you said the as far as the earliest like I guess images or writings, yeah. actually I think there are some writings. As far as carbon dating go, and I I'm a little skeptical of a lot of forms of carbon dating. Yeah. But um just in general what we can rely what we, what we have what we can reliably date, and even that's up to definition, but I'm gonna I'm gonna gloss over that point just for the sake of this particular point. There, as far as I know, the oldest religious stuff that we've discovered paleontologically and archaeologically is paganism. To the best of my knowledge, it actually yeah. is not Judaism. So what I would do at that point is say, well, what we have in the Bible is a record that goes all the way back to the very beginning, which these religious texts also do. So the question would at that point be, you know... We can't just say, okay, this religion was first because we have the oldest dating. What does the documentation say about itself? Well, religions, all religions claim to go back to the That's beginning true. of time. That's true. So I would look more into the authenticity of the written work itself. Whereas just one proof of the Bible, it's so historically grounded. Most religious texts are based in fantasy, unprovable stories. Whereas the Bible, you go to the Middle East, you can dig a lot of shit up. It's true. So that is a lot of shit over there. So there is a lot. A lot of sand. For me, that is one of the. Uh, it, there's no infallible proof for God or the Bible. We we take the evidence that we have and we make a determination based on all the stuff I mentioned earlier. How we were raised, the culture we live in, yeah. the best to the, and then we come to a point where we study ourselves. We have our own opinion, and to the best of my knowledge, of what I've studied. This religion in this book holds up better than all the others. It has a lot um, more proof and a lot more stuff going for it. So I tend to say, you know what? I believe this is true. Um, I believe this is right. Okay. Well, that, that's a that's the that's about a good response I could have asked for. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say next? Oh yeah. So in ter there in terms of all these religions, which I find it kind of odd, the paganism is resurging. Like, something that we currently refer to as mythology is being practiced again. I find that really interesting. Um, I know, it's cool. It's not cool. Um, I have... Particularly, because Nordic mythology was some cool shit. They got fucking ice giants. Does the Bible have ice giants? Didn't think so. All right. Haruhi Suzumiaism. Our god is hotter than yours. I don't know. Odin is a good looking motherfucker. <laughs> Andy Hopkins really didn't he, do it he, for me. He whispered into yeah. a hammer and it was so perplexed by his beautiful voice that it etched the writing into the hammer itself. And then he was like, hey son, take this shit. And he threw it out and it clocked in the face. But, um... Mjolnir! Mjolnir, Mjolnir is some cool shit. I don't know. It's kind of, I also kind of... Marvel like, nerds, anyone... Anyone? Well, that's what I was about to say. I also kind of find it kind of interesting that we're taking this thing that used to be a religion and is now a resurging religion. We're literally putting it in superhero movies. <laughs> like, how? How much of a dick move is that? Like, like you're sitting there watching Iron Man and shit. Oh, hey, look, it's my guy just flying around there kicking ass. <laughs> hey, this is America. It's the land of the free. Cool. I never you said it sit. wasn't allowed. I'm just saying it's fucking funny. It it, it honestly <laughs> is funny. Like, I can see my friend just sitting in that theater like, Oh yeah, God of Thunder, I'm gonna worship you tonight. You kick that alien ass. Like, was, <laughs> you can see that shit. It's funny. But that kind of leads into the next topic. This was now, I actually wasn't finished with homosexuality. Well, you just aren't. Yet. I was not. Okay, well, um, I'm making the point. Because there was... This lasted um, for four episodes. Heck yes, it has. I want to th I want to cover all ground. Um, whatever we don't know, we'll admit we don't know. Whatever our opinion is, we'll admit that's our opinion. If we have proof for something, awesome. Um, I, so far, what we have is we have our logic, we have our the brief studies we've done, and there are unknown areas. Um, and there are also unknown areas even for the professionals. There are some oh, things yeah. that just have not been discovered. There are some things that human minds have not found out with all their cool little instruments and gadgets yet. And th this is one, this is, as far as I know, I feel like I'm missing one point. If it comes back to me, I'll do it. Okay. For now, I do have kind of like one closing remark. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as a, as a Christian, as the Christian in this conversation, this is important. I am the only Christian now. 
Which, well, between the two of us, that's a true statement. I mean, it's important for me to be honest about this. As far as my proof against homosexuality, there was the point. I'm going to make my, this is going to be my closing remark, and I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass a question on to you. <laughs> as a Christian, the, the proof that I have that homosexuality is a sin is the Word of God alone. I have a lot of reasons to believe that this book is true. And because of those proofs, I believe that this Bible is the Word of God. So when it speaks on a subject, I take it to be God's opinion. And as the creator of all things, it's not opinion, it's absolute truth. And it is absolute, not subjective, on the topic. So when the Bible says in the Old and New Testaments, don't just look at Leviticus, look at Romans chapter 1, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, just as a quick side note, because English translations don't make it clear, 1 Corinthians 6 has two words. It says, like, um, it has two words for homosexuality there. And I also thought that was weird. It was like, why are you doubling up on this one particular subject? Because in the Greek, there was a word for the guy on top and the guy on the bottom. And Paul called both of them out. So in I don't the, know what the differentiation would be, but all right. Well, there, there were literally two all right, different dude, Greek it's words. it's giving it in the ass. And the one who's and taking, it. taking it. Yeah, there were two different words, and it was also mainly in reference to um, temple prostitution. There was a strong and heavy inference to temple prostitution in those Greek words, at least from what I studied. And I'll say it's no surprise to you that sex is a big part of worship, especially in pagan oh, religions. No, I, I could. I would never guess such a thing. Right? Who would have thunk it? So the Roman Empire didn't fall because of orgies. All right, I'm just kidding. But they but fucked so, so much they didn't get anything done. All right. <laughs> but so yes, um, my proof for homosexuality, my burden of proof, lies squarely on the Bible, and my proof rises, or I should say, stands or falls on the Bible itself being an authority. Um, as far as anyone else saying that homosexuality is okay, the proof there is pretty simple. If you don't have a God telling you what to do, especially if you are secular or a physicalist, there's no rule book by which you're bound. That's literally, actually what I was about to say. I literally thought, anything could go. I thought you were going to ask me, what's your proof? And I was going to be like, well, the lack of that Bible. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, but and, on, and along those lines, though, and this is not a shot at you, or a shot at oh, anyone in particular. Um, sure, that's yeah. why a pedophile party exists. When you don't have an absolute authority, when everything is up for grabs and it's up to human opinion, literally anything can go. That's why when um, the Israelites invaded Canaan and killed everybody, the, f the homes that um, were lived in in Canaan, the homes that were built upon by the Canaanites prior to the Jews. And archaeology has proved this. A major part of the foundation of those Canaanite homes was was babies and babies' bones. That's hot. They were, well, literally, there was that. It's funny that you mentioned Holy that. shit. It's funny in a really bad way. Oh, God, they melt it. There was, a, there was an idol to Molech, and it was a yeah, huge idol with iron hands. Remember this? The iron hands were superheated. And the firstborn child, that. the firstborn child was placed alive on those heated hands and melted. It's by what? As a sec, well, the iron. God? No, no, no. The the idol was made of iron. The the giant hands were made of iron, and they were heated by a fire underneath. A, a fire underneath. So the hands are thousands See, of degrees. All I pictured was just a hunk of iron with just burning hands. I was like, how the fuck are the hands burning? Just... No, the, the, the hands themselves were on fire. They were superheated. They were so when, above fire. So, right? when, so when the baby was placed on it, the baby would simply melt in those hands. That's disgusting. And you know what? It makes how did me, I not put the fire? All right. It gives me a lot more empathy for the Israelites wiping out those motherfuckers. Every single one of them. Yeah, I can see it. Now, a lot of Christians don't bring this up. About uh, how, and maybe you're not alluding to this, but I feel like it's where you're going. Okay. In that without a guide such as the Bible or another religion, there would be no morality. That's not entirely correct. I'll refer to my previous point. All humans are born because Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good okay, and evil. Yeah, All humans are born with the knowledge that good and evil exists. 
those two things are defined as we grow and mature and as because, we are culturally and, and parentally indoctrinated. Right, because a lot of people actually do say that. A lot of people do say that without things like the Bible, there would be no morality. And that's really not true at all. No, humans are born with a conscience. Um, because the Bible if you were that, to go to Romans two, completely uncivilized tribes in North Africa, South America, mm-hmm. Tribes that have never seen the outside world. We encountered them, learned about them a little bit, and got the fuck out. Mm -hmm. No one's been able to give them the Bible or any other religion because they were located and then ignored because they are, okay, let them live in their world. They don't want to come out, we're not going to force them. Which I think is good. I think, you know, if they don't want to fuck with us, we're not going to make more of us. I like that. Um, Let them do their own thing. But Missionaries. Oh. even then, I think you can force yourself on them. But even then... No, you can't force converts. Yeah. Even then, they do have a system of morals that isn't oh, yeah, that do. far away from common law like we got from England when we first, when America was first established. Being that... Now, that's a little surprising. Can't kill people unless it is deemed okay by the chief of whatever you are, area you are. Um, okay. You steal, hands cut off. Okay, that's, Shit like that. I was like, that, it should be since they're since they're tribes. It should be like old school type yeah, punishments. Yeah, common law, very common law. Like I said, like the laws we have now are very particular. The laws that England has now are very particular. But at the time when it was just England, and then we came over here and found what we thought was India and made our own shit. At, for the most part, it was just common law. Nothing. There wasn't much more than don't kill people, don't take shit. Mm-hmm. Be gone, ye. That's about all there was. Um, and so it's interesting that, like, these places that have no contact with the outside world come to the same conclusions. Um, and, and yeah, maybe it is because people are born with a conscience, they're born with a general sense of right and wrong. That's possible, I suppose. Well, people, again, there's, I think I, I think I could argue very effectively, what are you doing? I don't know, I get distracted easily. I, I, I don't think anyone would argue that this world is perfect and whole and good. Yeah, you Every, said that previously as well. Yeah. Uh, it, it bears reiterating at this point because, yeah, every human will acknowledge there's something wrong in the world. What that is, opinion widely varies, but everyone would agree that there's something wrong in this world. Now, do you have any more points to make about homosexuality? Because I, that is also a good segue. I had one final question for you. Okay. And that is, so I've already made my point about why I believe homosexuality is wrong. It stands or falls on the Bible. Right. From an evolutionary standpoint... And I don't believe in evolution. I'm personally a young earth creationist. Oh, wait, we're getting to that later, too. Evolutionarily, as far as homosexuality goes, that sounds like the worst possible idea that there could possibly be. Um, You can't have offspring with homosexuality. True. That's not even, it's not remotely possible. possible. So, genetically, I mean, if you were just looking at this from a scientific standpoint and an evolutionary scientific standpoint... Not taking modern technology away from it, obviously. But, but well, yeah, well, yeah, artificial insemination, stuff like that. Well, actually, it's it's fucking weird. And I and I know what you're going to ask, and I'll answer that right after I say this. Because I assume you're going to ask me, what's the point of gay people if it's not evolutionary beneficial? That was close to what I was going to say. I, what was it, were you going to say exactly? Well, I was going to say... Don't even atheists and agnostics have a really, wouldn't they have a good, strong motivation just logically to say homosexuality isn't not only an abnormality, it's a bad abnormality. It doesn't propagate the gene pool. Like your, your brain's not working the way it should. And I know that sounds incredibly offensive. I'm trying to state facts as brutally and honestly as possible. I don't gain anything by hiding from you guys. And again, this stuff needs to be put in the public forum. It just sounds like the evolutionists would be the first in line to say, scientifically, your brains are fucked. Right. Okay. So, two things. First off, the original thing about artificial insemination. Um, it's actually a thing that's really weird. Men are completely unnecessary at this point. We're not needed whatsoever. You can actually fertilize a female's egg with the bone marrow of another woman. Um, in doing so, it can only make a female baby. What? Men are literally not necessary at all anymore. I have never heard that. We are not needed. Now, the technology hasn't been perfected yet. You can do it. They did it. It kind of fucked up a little bit. But they proved that it's possible. 
Hundred right, millions of babies was completely fucked over. So, uh, did that baby have a soul? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, on to your other point. Um, as for whether it's evolutionarily possible, um, I kind of gonna take this in little seconds. As for whether it's evolutionarily possible, possible, yes, of course it is, because every species of animal does. Now, granted, very few do it out of pleasure. Most animals just hump because it's their instinct to hump. That's why dogs hump human legs and inanimate objects. That's why you'll see cats just walking around occasionally, just nah, 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 nah. it happens just because their instinct is to hump. There are, only, uh, there are like three animals on the face of the earth that have sex for pleasure. It's humans, dolphins, I think chimps. I was, no, those were the three I was going to mention. Yep. Um, yeah, only ones. And they'll do it. They'll gay sex. Uh, as for... Now, it, it, it probably would have been a big deal. Some... Couple... 10,000 years ago. Probably wouldn't have been a big deal. Now, you don't think they're that old. Uh, they even thousands of years ago. May have been a bigger deal because, you know, <clears throat> there were humans were on an island when they populated the planet. Now, there's almost 8 billion people on this earth. We are running this fucker to capacity. Right? A couple of gay dudes getting it on and not having any kids isn't going to hurt the species whatsoever. But the point, but the point of but the evolution po- yeah. isn't the whole species. It's for you and your family genome specifically, right? But um, as for that family genome, and this will man, I can't wait until we get to the next topic because literally all of these can link into it. Um, it could just be that way back when, whenever humans were first becoming a thing, where they were made, where they evolved, whatever, <coughs> uh, homosexuality wasn't as prevalent because uh, by evolutionary standards it was necessary that they reproduced. Now, as we're getting to this point, it, the argument can even be made that we are making too many babies. The Earth is getting too full of people. There are too many people consuming a limited amount of resources. Um, and we haven't perfected renewable resources yet. Uh, so, with the Earth being a limited space, limited resources, and obviously evolution wouldn't be able to tell whether we've made Earth, uh, renewable energy or not. But uh, once we've gotten to this point, and we're running out of space, it could at that point be evolutionary advantageous for some of the people to not have kids. So that the planet isn't fucking overflowing with people. Is there some kind of built-in genetic, I don't know, kill switch to say, okay, stop reproducing? Well, we're not sure because... Yeah, it just sounds It sounds like you want to make evolution a sentient being. Well, or Mother Earth a sentient being. Well, I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm saying that there could have been a... Because like, yeah, I'm obviously not an expert on how evolution works. Yeah. But it's possible that it... Whatever it was had like a limit a time limit on it or something and like it run for this amount of time and then or maybe over time it changed and it just happened to be once we're running full capacity i don't fucking know i don't have solid concrete answers i'm just saying that there are situations that evolution could still have a case made for it uh me not being an evolutionary scientist knowing only the basics of evolution because honestly i don't give a shit where people came from I honestly don't fucking care. I'm honestly with you on that. I don't give a shit whether we evolved. I don't give a shit whether we were made. I don't fucking care. Point is, we're here now. Yup. Do whatever the fuck you think is best. Excuse me. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, I haven't looked into evolutionary science a whole lot. Because it doesn't interest me. We're both on the same page there. Um, so, I like I said, I can't give you a... Full, uh, an answer that fully makes sense on a subject that I'm not completely knowledgeable on. Like I said, I have That's guess- fair enough. I have guesses, and some of those guesses entail how uh, perhaps <clears throat> evolution's doing a thing where it can recognize there's a fuckload of people. I don't know how the fuck would recognize that because I don't know how evolution works. 
But if it could, then that would explain why gay people are more prevalent now, because if it can figure that out, if it did have something set in it to be able to know, however... This sounds really fucking weird. I'm personifying evolution. Uh, to know whenever there are too many fucking people, which probably isn't even possible. But if it is, then it makes sense. You know? Like I said, I'm not very knowledgeable on the topic, so I can't... I can't point at this and that. Oh, like, that does... It just... I mean, well, and you are, admittedly, you just said it yourself, you, you really are just kind of throwing your guesses out to the way yeah. there. You, you and I wanted to clarify that. I'm not saying any of this is fact. I'm saying this is, I don't know, maybe. It's a maybe, it's, it's a maybe possibility. You honestly don't care that much. Not really. And I just, um, yeah, I'll say evolution itself is another topic that I think, apparently we're going to get into at least to some degree. But as far as homosexuality goes, <clears throat> there's the possibility Ability. There's the possibility of a kill switch, but that was that sounds a lot more like a wild theory when we know for evolutionary scientists would say we know for certain that the whole point of it is to propagate your species and to propagate your specific unless genes. Right, unless evolution was constructed by aliens and they're like, hey, there's too many fucking people. Flip the switch, stop making them do it in the book. Other alien. Prove I'm wrong. Prove it. <laughs> no, what's, what is hilarious to me is that, um, oh, come on, Richard Dawkins, yeah. when pressed by Ben Stein in regards to God and creation, <clears throat> he didn't say, like, I believe this. He didn't even say there's a pos he Well, he did say there's a possibility of this, but he didn't sound like he thought this was a credible theory, but he actually said, even if somehow, like, a superior alien race created us, even they were formed at some point in past time by the process of evolution. <clears throat> so evolution all the way, but maybe someone else had something to do with the order of the universe. And it's just like, why would you even bring that up considering your stated position so many times over? I mean, literally, aliens. like literally, that give is... me the funky hair and the fucking history logo. I mean, that is like, aliens. I mean, that is, that is fucking pulling it out of your ass if ever I've heard of it. I mean, hey, prove he's wrong though. Uh... I man, I never mind. I could have gotten real offensive just then. <laughs> We're pretty much out of time, and I think we've. Thoroughly covered homosexuality. We have pre uh, preview for the next episode. I've been hitting at it for the last four. We're moving on to free will. Let's do it. Because free will can be debated. Yes, it can, even from an evolutionary standpoint. I've had that discussion before. Great. So we're gonna end this episode here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button. And if you really liked it, share with a friend, subscribe, and join the freaks. I love you. God bless. Ah!